Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Friday, May 27th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, here we are tracking what is now Tropical Depression 2 east of Florida. This was upgraded this afternoon after a recon plane went in there, found that the circulation is indeed closed, and we've had some at least disorganized thunderstorm activity near the center for the last day or so, indicating that this uh, system is now being sustained primarily by tropical processes, unlike the non-tropical processes which spawned it. And uh, we do see that it remains somewhat disorganized and sheared out of the south. You see milky white clouds streaming from uh, bottom to top of the screen here, indicating southerly shear. The center of circulation is only partially covered by thunderstorms, and so this remains somewhat disorganized and really hasn't strengthened much in the last 24 hours. But it is now moving a little bit quicker now toward the northwest, and it will be making its journey toward the South Carolina coastline during the next day or two, and the track thereafter may feature it meandering in the area uh, more slowly. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, we see in the water vapor imagery here, the system is right where these colder cloud tops are, but we see the cyclonic flow aloft uh, associated with this, uh, low, uh, this upper level trough, rather, that is bringing southerly flow aloft over the system, uh, inducing shear, which has lessened since yesterday. It's down from 40 knots to 20 to 30 today, but that 20 to 30 knots of shear may remain in place over this region for the duration of Tropical Depression 2's journey toward the coast, as this trough will not be moving anywhere very fast. So the system is likely to remain sheared, and this will likely put a large damper on just how strong this can get before it comes toward the coast. However, some strengthening is possible as it will be moving over some much warmer water tomorrow at some point. Uh, you can actually see invisible imagery here. There's this band I'm about to highlight where the uh, low-level cumulus is being enhanced, and this is a direct response to the air moving over the Gulf Stream, which is just off the southeast coast here. And if you don't believe that's where it is, here's the satellite picture showing where the warm water is. So it's showing up in the satellite field. Uh, this is exactly where the system is most likely to have a good chance to strengthen is when it's over this band of warm water. If you can see the cumulus being enhanced in the shallow uh, in the shallow layer here, then you can imagine it will aid this deep convection as the system moves over that same area sometime tomorrow. And so it may have its best chance at some intensification during that time. But the water does get colder again toward the shelf, and so if it slows down near the coast, it will be over colder water again and may weaken for, uh, after any intensification over the Gulf Stream. However, again, wind shear is likely to limit the upper ceiling that this storm can reach, and right now it is only expected to be a moderate strength tropical storm as it approaches the coast. This is the National Hurricane Center forecast showing the depression moving northwest and then slowing down substantially as it nears the coast and then perhaps drifting off toward the northeast as it weakens likely due to being sheared and interaction with land. Uh, this is forecast to be about a 45 mile per hour tropical storm in terms of wind. The primary threats from this storm are likely to be heavy rain due to slow movement and rip currents along the coast, more so than the wind right now. Um, it will probably be slowing down. One of the reasons for that is uh, as this long wave trough over the Great Plains begins to lift out toward the northeast, it will be building high pressure behind it to the west in the low levels. And so this is likely to trap to some extent the low level circulation near or just off the coast of South Carolina or North Carolina, and it may drift around for a while between two ridges, one to its east, one to its west. It may be kind of stuck in between here before gradually moving out toward the north and east. And depending on the extent to which it is sheared, uh, that will determine how much it moves. If it is strong approaching the coast, it will move inland very quickly. If it is weaker and sheared as it comes toward the coast, it may decouple and uh, meander around in the low levels uh, for a couple of days in this area. And so it may bring some extra rain to some spots, but uh, if it does slow down that much, uh, it will be weak by necessity. So again, this is the NHC forecast showing the storm moving off toward the South Carolina coast and then slowing down, bringing heavy rain and rip currents as the primary concern. Uh, some strengthening is possible, but right now this is not forecast to be the biggest wind threat, more so heavy rainfall and rip currents along the coast, and in general, kind of lousy weather for the Memorial Day weekend. Keep tuned to the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service offices for the latest information. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.